Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse here and I am back for another channel update and miscellaneous topic video. Uh, so we're just going to jump right in. There's a lot I kind of want to talk about today again. I cannot believe that we are halfway through November already. As I'm recording this, it is Monday, November 15th. And it just seems like November started like two days ago. And I just got all my bills paid again. <laughs> but yeah, month is half over. Thanksgiving is next week already. So hey, uh, if you're celebrating that, happy Thanksgiving uh, to everybody. But yeah, so yeah, lots to talk about. I want to give a channel update. I want to talk a little bit about uh, some blind low vision stuff. And then I do also want to talk a little bit about the 20th anniversary of Xbox and their event and, you know, maybe a couple Xbox memories. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, get going. So again, uh, I start off these types of videos by uh, welcoming, welcoming everybody to the channel. Thank you to everybody who has been supporting it for how, however long you've been here. Much appreciated. For people who are new, I do unlock videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, except the one case I totally forgot. This last Saturday I forgot. I thought about it early in the morning, but I was doing something else. And then I realized Sunday morning, I'm like, oh crap, I never unlocked a video. So uh, it came on Sunday instead. But I do unlock videos Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Mondays are Twitch archives usually. <clears throat> so you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash illegally cited. Um, and then Wednesday and Saturdays are everything else. Everything is in playlists, so you can find um, low vision game videos, uh Blind accessible videos, iOS, PC, VR accessibility, game accessibility, hardware reviews, geek, loot spotlight videos. You never know what you're going to find. You know, always trying new stuff. So uh, lots of stuff there. So yeah, the channel has been keeping very busy. Of course, the fall season, there's lots of new games being released and lots of new things being released. I've been talking the last couple of months about... Uh, a possible computer upgrade. Well, I now have that computer upgrade. I've done a couple of videos on uh, some new games since getting my new computer, mainly the Minecraft RTX version. I've got a Quake 2 RTX video coming soon. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I may do, I may talk, about, well, I might talk a little bit about my computer in this one too, um, just to give people an idea. But, um, Another one of my favorite videos recently is, you see in the recent videos list here, that little robot in the middle there. Yes, uh, one of the coolest toys I've ever seen, really, honestly. Geekiest toy I've ever seen is the um, Robosyn Optimus Prime. Uh, it is a transforming... Optimus Prime robot, and I don't really mean toy robot or action figure. This thing is a big, like 19 inch tall, um, transforming robot. Yes, it speaks in Peter Cullen's voice. It transforms by itself. It is awesome. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely give that one a look because it's pretty great. Not going to lie. Um, lots of stuff coming. Got another couple hardware reviews probably coming out at some point. I've covered the Nintendo Switch OLED. Um, got a couple other odds and ends coming through there. Like I said, new games this fall. Got a Forza Horizon 5 video coming soon. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, but yeah, you know, our usual end of year recap sometime in late December. Got to start thinking about that here fairly soon. But, uh, yeah, so the channel itself is keeping very busy. Uh, I've been streaming sometimes on Fridays, but um, Fridays or Saturdays is when I usually stream on Twitch. So you can catch me there, again, twitch.tv slash illegally cited. So just keep checking back for the channel because there's always new stuff coming. I haven't decided if this video is going to be a bonus video for Tuesday or if it's going to be just if I'll wait a couple of days and just release it for Wednesday's video. So we'll see. Anywho, um, yeah. 
So one topic I did want to talk about um, is there's a, there's kind of been some stuff floating around the social media verse, as it were, again, and sort of some confusion and people's different people's takes on things. Um, and I do want to clarify, at least as far as my channel is concerned, how I approach things philo philosophically about it. There's been a little bit of confusion um, and sort of ambiguity for some places where, you know, people claim that, oh, this is an accessible game or this is not an accessible game or some somewhere in between. And, you know, the main thing you have to remember is whether it's vision, hearing, mobility, cognitive, whatever it happens to be, all of this stuff is on a spectrum, you know, so everybody has their own level or, you know, level on the spectrum of, let's say, vision impairment. You know, my vision is not going to be exactly the same as pretty much anybody else. Um, that being said, uh, when I do cover videos and... When I, if you go to the PC Accessible Game Spotlight or the iOS Accessible Game Spotlight, when I say Accessible Game, I'm referring to it as, in the context of Blind Low Vision, I am referring to those games and those videos, that playlist, as games that somebody with little to no usable vision, somebody who is totally blind, could play those games. Could be voiceover, could be t uh, text to speech or PC screen reader, could be an audio game. But regardless, those games are titles that are totally playable by someone who is completely blind. Low Vision Spotlight, I even have people ask me uh, on Twitter or in the comments for a Low Vision Spotlight game video. Um, is this is this game accessible to a blind person and i'm hoping to clarify again and that's why i say low vision spotlight because in those cases i really think when i'm labeling them that way i really tend to think of them as games where you might be able to get some sort of enjoyment out of it but largely, I would, I would guess that people would need to have some usable vision to get anywhere in that game. You know, and you have, like I said, I haven't released the video for this yet, but Forza Horizon 5, I talk about it in the Spotlight video. Um... I would still majorly consider it a low vision spotlight game. Yes, you can kind of play it if you are totally blind. Um, but there are, I, I don't consider it, it is the most accessible Forza game for sure. But I don't know that I would call it blind, totally blind accessible. Because you can't, you cannot navigate the world map independently. There are some, you know, you can use this Anna uh, navigation system that will take you to some of the races, uh, but some of the other types of events do not track in the way that will guide you, so you can't do those independently. And the driving itself... Um, if you are totally blind, you basically have to rely on completely automated driving. The only thing that you do is you lock in a GPS coordinate or you lock in an, um, like an, a waypoint on your GPS and then you hold down the right trigger to accelerate and the car steers itself. So you can participate in races this way. You can you know, follow your GPS to an event or a race that way. However, there's really not much control. And actually, I was kind of playing with it where it was fully automated. And I would kind of argue that if you do 
try to steer a little bit, it can also it can actually be detrimental because you're you're kind of fighting it, and then you may actually over or under steer, and end up off the track, and then it gets a little squirrely trying to get back on and figure out where you're going. So, you know, while you can technically finish a race and even win races, you're not really driving. Like I said, you're just holding down the trigger. So, you know, as far as you having actual... There's really not any... There's not really any skill to it. You just hold a button down and there you go. I'm hoping that some of this can be... Uh, improved on later. Some of the menu narration needs a bit of work. I'm glad it's there, but it needs work. So check out that video when it comes out because I have a lot to say. But those are some examples of, you know, uh, low vision spotlight versus PC accessible game spotlight or accessible game spotlight. If I say accessible, I do mean blind accessible. If I say low vision, I'm thinking, yeah, you're probably going to need some usable vision to be able to make this game work. So that is where I stand. And myself, um, you know, everyone's different. Again, everyone's on a spectrum. I do, I do say that I am legally blind. I'll kind of use low vision, legally blind, fairly interchangeably. I know there's a there's a specific uh, limit or a specific point where you where someone is considered legally blind at least in the United States here but <clears throat> I don't I don't refer to myself as blind not because I mean I yes technically I am legally blind therefore blindness is a spectrum and most people who are blind have some usable vision so you know if you really want to look technically about it I probably would be considered blind to a lot of people I, when I'm at least you doing things and playing games and using tech and whatever that I do for this channel, I don't consider myself blind because I don't want to confuse anybody. Um, if I say on one minute, if I say that I'm blind and then the next minute I go, God, look at these graphics. These, these, this environment is really pretty. You know, this is really amazing looking you're sending mixed signals and you're confusing people and then you say, oh, well, I think this game is actually really accessible. Uh, okay, but well, what do you mean? Accessible if you have some usable vision? Um, you know, there are, there are some things where other people were reviewing, th were reviewing games and they would say, oh, this is the most accessible, this is wonderful. Um, but they were largely using their vision to still play the game. They had limited vision, but they were using their vision and a lot of people were getting confused about that. So I, I really try to make it clear um, when something is totally blind, playable slash accessible. So that's where I come from. I'm not gonna say that I'm totally blind or that I'm just blind because I'm not. I use audio, I use text-to-speech, I use screen readers all the time, every day. Well, not all the time, but every day I do. But I also do a lot of things visually, uh, whether it's using Windows or navigation, you know, getting around my apartment or, you know, the real world or whatever, or playing a game. So, I, yes, I use audio, yes, I use tactile feedback or some O&M techniques and stuff, but I would consider myself legally blind, low vision, but I wouldn't refer to myself as blind because I don't want to confuse people in that way. So that's where I stand on that, and hopefully that makes some of my content and videos more clear to you. So... um like I said, uh, I did get a new computer. Um, I got it on Halloween, actually. Halloween was a great day for me because I had a uh, little bit of candy. And I got my computer that day. And I got my, uh, my Optimus Prime that day. So I was, it was Merry Christmas early for me that day. So I was setting all kinds of stuff up. Had a friend of mine stop by. 
uh, that day, and we chatted for a little while, and he helped me with, with a couple things real quick. But uh, yeah, so what I ended up getting is an HP Omen desktop. Like I said, normally I don't go pre-built. Uh, I've kind of gone more custom build from a local shop because I want exactly what's, I want to know exactly what's in there. You know, I don't want a lot of crapware, bloatware, whatever on it. So that's what I've been doing the last several computers that I've had. But with chip shortage, uh, chip shortages and scalpers and just the, the cost and everything so out of whack right now, uh, I thought, you know, a pre-built is probably just a more economical way to go. And, you know, my friend, he had a computer that crapped out on him, so he was looking for a new one. He, you know, I had been looking at getting a new PC for a while, and uh, after he had found one that said, hey, you know, this one is, yes, it's a pre-built, but it's, you know, f it's got a lot of user replaceable parts. It's not really super custom. Um, I looked at it and went, you know, that's not actually half bad, especially for the price that he paid. And I found a similar model. I wanted to go a little bit higher spec. Um, so I got the HP Omen desktop. Um, oh, I forget the exact... I forget the exact model, um, but spec-wise, we have a Core i7, 11, 11th Gen Core i7. Uh, we have 64 gigabytes of RAM, and we have a RTX, NVIDIA RTX 3080 graphics card. So that's what I am currently running right now, and I am running all MVME solid-state hard uh, solid state drives so i have a primary is a one terabyte and then i have a secondary two terabyte drive that i'm going to use for all my games and content like that and overall uh i have been pretty impressed with it i've been quite pleased with the computer so far it does have a little bit of neon lighting that some of these gamer rigs generally tend to have there's a fan on the front and it's got a little glowy circle around it. Um, there's there's some light. There's a glowy diamond on the front of it uh, near the top middle. And then there's a um, there's a little bit of glowiness. There's a window on the on the left side of the tower, uh, like a lot of towers nowadays will have. And that's got a little bit of RGB lighting in it as well. And all of these lights, it's got some custom software. I haven't tried playing with a screen reader, but I kind of doubt they're screen reader friendly. But um, it's kind of nice, actually, because you can control, you can customize the color. You can do, like, different effects where it'll swap between uh, different colors, or you can have it based on temperature, uh, change color, like how hot your machine is running. You can... Um, view your CP, you know, your, your processor and your graphics card. You can, you can view the, uh, temperature and usage percentage and not just all kinds of other system information. That's kind of nice to have. And the machine is run great overall, you know, I mean, uh, it, it actually came with windows 11. So I have been using that. And, uh, other than getting a, figuring out a few initial quirks, I think I've largely got things back to where they need to be, kind of like how I had my previous Windows 10 machine set up. Uh, I've played several games on it. I've played a little bit of Guardians of the Galaxy, some Forza. I played some Minecraft RTX, some Quake 2 RTX. What else have I played? I uh, still played a little bit of more Power Wash Simulator, a little bit of House Flipper while I was reading this weekend. Um... Oh, there's another new game that I had played a little bit. Um, but, you know, I've played a good chunk of different games, uh, older and newer. And, uh, I mean, everything is really run like butter. I mean, even like Forza Horizon 5, it runs on like the highest graphic level at 1080p because I got a 1080p monitor. Um, and it's it just runs smooth as butter and it looks amazing. So no complaints there. 
My only real potential sort of concern is I wish they would have, I wish they would have added one more fan, a little bit more cooling to the tower. It's kind of a mid tower, um, but there's a couple fans in there, one giant fan at the front, and there's like a side, uh, kind of a side screen on the left-hand side. There's like a little vent that comes in at the front of the tower that will suck the cool air in. Um, but judging by like kind of looking at what other machines are supposed to run with similar specs, uh, they, even they say with the core I seven, but especially the core I nine, uh, this, these Omen machines run a little bit on the warm, warmer side than they maybe should. Like they could use a little bit more, um, a little bit better cooling, but I've been, you know, I've been really keeping an eye on, the temperature and everything, and it doesn't seem to go anywhere um, out of the out of the decent operating temperature range. So it it so far it's been good, knock on wood. But I'm hoping you know it stays that way. Um, so overall, you know, I'm generally pretty happy with it. I did have one kind of weird scare. Uh, in addition to gaming, I've been using it for work. So I've used Zoom. I've used Teams. I've used Google Meet. I've done all kinds of stuff like that. I've, you know, done my usual work stuff through, you know, Microsoft Office and Outlook and um, all kinds of stuff. So I've used it for work too. Um, and I haven't had a problem. But the one, I was writing an email one day and for whatever reason, the computer just went and it just like instantly rebooted itself. No idea why. There was no blue screen or anything, but it just rebooted. And, you know, having read in the review that, oh, okay, the machine runs a, you know, a little bit on a little, a tiny bit on the warmer side. I was really, I got paranoid for a couple days of like, God, is this thing going to be running too hot? Um, and I kept checking the temperature and everything, but it's really been fine. It's other than that one weird glitch, it's run pretty much flawlessly uh, otherwise. So I don't know. Uh, I'm happy with it so far, and I'm just able. I'm glad to be able to play more games again on my PC uh, and have them r not only look better but actually run faster and better the way they're supposed to. Uh, Halo Infinite. They just announced today that they're that they released the multiplayer beta early um, prior to the official launch in December. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that later too, but, um, that's just kind of an overview, my initial thoughts on my PC. I'm quite enjoying it so far. So glad things worked out. Well, content will keep coming. One other thing that I have been working on, actually a couple of things I've been working on in, in addition to the channel, I did post a link on Twitter this past, uh, weekend or Friday or something on Thursday, Last week, I did. Uh, I was invited on to to do an interview with Tech Talk Live. Uh, that's uh, through Vision Forward in Wisconsin, and they do an episode every couple of weeks on different technology topics, assistive technology topics. And I was a guest on their latest episode talking about game accessibility and a little bit of VR toward the end. So it was actually, it ended up being a really fun interview and I really, I enjoyed it. I think the uh, interview, I think the, the episode went really well. It's not on my channel. Um, but if you do go to my game accessibility playlist, you will, you will find that video cause you can link to external videos. Um, in your own playlist. So I did add that as a game accessibility link because I thought, okay, that'll, that'll work really well. Um, so definitely check that out. Definitely do that. Um, I had a lot of fun doing, I had a lot of fun talking with those guys. So check that out if you haven't done so already. And God forbid, you know it's starting to get cold because hell is frozen over or starting to freeze over or something. I actually updated my website just a little bit. I added some other links and a couple other little resources here and there. 
And uh, yeah, so even though this website looks terrible, it looks like a site from like 1991, <laughs> it's all text. Uh, I don't really have any graphic arts ability right now. Um, but I did update illegallycited.com. Um, some of the projects pages, uh, a couple of the resource paid uh, things on the resource page. And then I did a, a, a blog post on there as well. So yeah, I think it's been even over a year since I've touched that website. I feel kind of bad about that. But um, yes, I finally did it. I finally did a couple uh, minor updates to illegallycited.com and maybe I will try to be a little better about that going forward, hopefully. So those are a couple other things I've been working on. So the I think that's really the, the last thing that I really want to talk about uh, is the Microsoft 20th anniversary event today because yes um, it is 20 the, the original Xbox is 20 years old and god I'm old because I was in college when that thing came out and um, I remember when it did because if I remember correctly it launched on the same I think they launched like three days apart there was the Xbox and the GameCube they launched right around the same time the ps2 would come out earlier and then my friend ended up getting an xbox i got a gamecube and a couple of my other friends had ps2s so we were all pretty well covered and originally you know we were all this is coming off of you know look at the like the the antitrust trial in 1999 that microsoft had been going through and everyone kind of had this really negative um, opinion of Microsoft back then. And then, you know, we found out, oh, they're going to be making a games console. Oh, yeah, that's going to flop. That's going to be another Virtual Boy. That's going to be another, you know, <clears throat> name any other number of consoles that sort of flopped in the 90s, you know, the 3DO or the Jaguar. Like, I mean, I don't know anyone who owned either one of those consoles. I mean, they had cool games, but... I never knew anyone who had them, um, but we all thought it was going to flop. Like, what the hell do they know about making game console? Uh, you know, they had made Flight Simulator, and they had done a couple other things, you know, on, on for Windows and stuff, but a whole game console? Eh, I don't know. And my friend, he got Halo, and I believe the other one he got, I think it was called Reckless? It was this re it was this um, racing game that it looked okay, but it just didn't seem all that fun. Um, I lo I remember it had a DeLorean in it, and we all thought that was pretty cool. We used to take our consoles because we lived in college. We used to take our consoles into some of the classroom buildings at night because a couple of us had keys, and so we'd go in and hook them up to our giant projectors and then just play them on the projector, play single player, multiplayer, just hang out on these giant screens. And, you know, we'd play into the wee hours of the morning and eventually the security guard would do his rounds and eventually find us and say, okay, you guys got to go home and stay there until we left. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we played, you know, Xbox, PS2, GameCube, all of that kind of stuff in the dorms. And, you know, I saw Reckless. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, that's fine. But then I did see Halo. And, I, you know, I had played Goldeneye, Perfect Dark. You know, there were first-person shooters. Medal of Honor on the PlayStation. There were first-person shooters on consoles. I mean, there were crappy ports of Doom and whatnot. Like the, oh, God, the 32X version of Doom. <laughs> Let's not go there, but, uh, you know, Halo just kind of had a whole new style to it. Like, I, I you know, I love the kind of opening cutscene, just all the dialogue, and, you know, it, it just seemed more modern in a way. I like the futuristic setting, and then when we started to play, the, just the gameplay looked fun, and, you know, starting out with the Covenant, I thought that the... You know, hearing the grunts, those were always just amusing. You got these little, like, 
little munchkin grunt things, you know, that are running around like in their high pitched voices saying goofy things. You got the elites that are, you know, these big brutish guys with shields and just, you know, doing their chants and everything. But it was kind of neat. And then seeing the warthog on that kind of open level, the second level, when you go down to the halo surface and <clears throat> you're traveling, you know, it wasn't open world, but it was a pretty wide open level that we really didn't see on a console back then because they just couldn't handle it. So the combination of open and, you know, being in this vehicle, it was kind of neat. And then I eventually did get an Xbox because I really wanted to play Halo. And then coming from the Dreamcast, I had I had found out that Shenmue 2 was going to be an Xbox exclusive in North America uh, because Shenmue 2 came out in the Dreamcast, but it was only in Europe. And I wanted to play it. And so I'm like, well, guess what? I guess I'm getting an Xbox because I really wanted to play Shenmue. And I wanted to play Halo. And then there were a bunch of other titles. Like there was there was actually quite a bit on the original Xbox that I liked. Um, you had the old Duke controller is what they called it. You know, that's what they call it now. But it was the original Xbox controller. They had the controller S later on, which was a smaller version that many more people liked. But... You know, I generally have large hands, and I really liked the Duke controller. I mean, this thing was big. Uh, our friends, my friends and I, we called it the bagel. I, I think my friend Jerry had coined it the bagel because it kind of had this, the shape of it was a little bit different than what you're used to. It kind of had this weird, like, it was a different angle. It was kind of puffy thing, like, rounded like a bagel. And so that's where we got it. Um, you know, you had the four face buttons, and then you had the black and white buttons instead of the the bumpers. Uh, they still had memory cards, but it had a hard drive. Like this is, oh, this console actually has a hard drive. You don't have to buy memory cards for it. Um, you could play DVDs, but you had to get the special DVD remote. See, the PS2 back in the day, that was a huge selling point because it came with a, a DVD player capability and you could use the DualShock controller with it. But the Xbox, yes, it natively supported DVDs, but you had to put this infrared receiver into one of the front ports and then it would pair with the uh, Xbox DVD remote. Eventually, I did get one of those when it was on sale because it was just a nice way to have a DVD player hooked up to my TV. Because uh, back then, DVDs, I'd just watch them on my computers usually. But, uh, no, I mean, I have a lot of Xbox memories. Um, like I said, just going up in the dorms, playing Halo, playing Tony Hawk, playing... Um, oh, God, any number of things, like playing like Jade Empire, um, Fable, the original Fable. I, I remember, it was so frustrating because I remember I had trouble with my original Xbox. Most people remember the red ring of the 360, but I remember having a little bit of trouble, and I don't remember if it was either once or twice that my original Xbox had failed too because I remember I was a good way through Fable, and I believe it was where you were breaking your sister out of prison or something. And all of a sudden I came to turn it on one day to play and it just crapped out. And I had to send it in and I had to wait like a couple weeks to a month to play Fable again. I'm like, oh man, really? Um, I, I want to say it might have crapped out one more time, but I can't remember for sure. But I know for certain it did at least once because I remember it was in the middle of Fable. Actually, I think I had played it on my friend's console because he had an Xbox too. So my my roommate at the time, he was playing it. And so I, I either watched him play or I played it on his or something because I'm like, damn it, I want to play this. It was fun. Uh, the original Fable 1 and 2 were really cool. Three was, it was good, but it didn't, it was lacking some of the 
charm and stuff of the first two. And we're hopefully going to be getting a new Fable, either a sequel or a reboot here in the next couple of years, because they already teased it. Um, but yeah, Fable was great. Burnout 3, yeah, Burnout 3, we played the crap out of that. Um, one of my favorite racing games ever. I mean, just the, the, the takedown aspect where, you know, most games you have to avoid everything, but this one, oh no, you got opponents, you're encouraged, ram them into the wall, make them fly and burst into millions of pieces and burst into flame. Burnout 3, awesome. Like I said, Jade Empire, that was a fun one. That was when I started really getting more into RPGs because there were starting to be a few more that were real-time. Everything up to that point was mostly turn-based. And then they had this sort of action RPG, you know, Bioware, and uh, they went from there to Mass Effect and whatnot. But yeah, Jade Empire, I really dug that. There was another game, uh, PsyOps, the Mindgate Conspiracy. That was really cool because you had you were it was a third-person shooter, but you had all these psychic powers. You had like pyrokinesis. You could start dudes on fire. Telekinesis. You could lift things up in the environment or lift people up and chuck them all around the environment. And you had to use them for puzzles and for combat. And then you had like you had like a mind control thing where you could like inhabit the the body of an enemy, and then you could use him to shoot the other like shoot the other dudes. Or, like, you could take him, like, there, oh, there's a guy in a guard tower. I'll take mind control over him, and then I'll just make him jump out and commit suicide. Just jump out of the tower, and then he can't he can't come after me or can't sound the alarm. Uh, PsyOps was really cool. There was an, That was a neat time because there was another game called Second Sight. And I had played that after uh, PsyOps, and at first I couldn't get into it because I'm like, I wanted it to be... PsyOps, and it wasn't. It was its own unique take on psychic powers. And once I slowed down and gave it a chance, I actually did get into it. I really respected it for what it did differently. Um, but that was pretty cool. God, what else did we play? We had the OXM demo discs. That's back when they had demo discs. Remember those? Get the OXM magazine, and then you got demos on the demo CD. Um, God, what other Xbox games? Um, I remember they had that Conquer Live and Reloaded, but I just, they edited it. I mean, it looked better, but it just, they edited it and they made weird changes and I just, I didn't like it as much as the first N64 version. Um, there were a lot of just little hidden gems in that system that I that I kind of remember playing. I think there was a game, I think it was called Whiplash. It was a bizarre, like, action platformer, and you were, like, there was, like, a, what was it, a weasel and a rabbit or something? And it was at this, like, science lab experiment thing where, like, they were chained together, and you were playing, like, the weasel or whatever it was, and then you had the you had this rabbit tethered to you and the, the, the rabbit, what I was, you know, he was always making quips and everything, but like you would use them as a weapon. So you would fling them around at your enemies or start them on fire. And it was just, it was, it was a weird freaking game. I think it was called whiplash, but I can't remember for certain. I mean, going online with Xbox Live. I really didn't do that much on the original Xbox. I really didn't do that until the 360. But I remember, oh God, that's right, yes. But I remember when I was with my when I was living with my roommate, we had Xboxes and we connected them locally over the network. Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Man. The first two games I just really couldn't get into because they had this insta fail. You you know you fail a minute, you get caught once or you get caught two three times, and the mission was over. Well, Chaos Theory opened that up a little bit more and said, "Oh, okay, we want you to be stealthy, but if you get seen, you basically just have to run and hide, and let 
you know, let the stealth, let the enemies cool down a little bit and return to their patrols. Uh, and I played a lot of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory single player, and then it had a System Link co-op mode, and my friend Chris and I, we played all the way through that, and that was actually quite fun, because, oh, excuse me, you both were agents with these suits, uh, suits in different vision modes, and you're sneaking through, they had uh, a different objectives that were geared more toward two players and I remember there was this one level where we had to sneak across this room filled with lasers and we felt so stupid afterward because we go through the room and you had to disable the lasers obviously otherwise it would set off an alarm well we thought, oh, okay, you have to, you know, they, they had this, the person over our radio was like, oh, you know, hit the light and then it'll disable the laser. And we found that if you hit the little red at the end of, like, on the wall where the laser was, it would disable that beam. So we were going through and actually like, okay, I'm going to cross this beam and then I'm going to stand here. Then you hit the thing, and then all, all we'll kind of, we're kind of stepping our way across each other and going through a half a dozen or more of these stupid little laser beams. We go do the objective on the other side, only to go back into the room, and my friend goes, um, look up. And here there's this giant red light, like high up on the wall. And you do the little zapper thing on it and it would short it would short out all of the beams at once so you didn't have to tediously go through and do all of them and we're both like oh for fuck's sake really really um but we had a pretty good laugh about that um but it was funny like we got through it the other way we it was way more difficult but we did it we got through it um, but yeah, playing a lot of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Psychonauts, you know, I still got to get around to Psychonauts 2 here soon, but Psychonauts was the original Xbox, and both of us played that. Um, I can I could embarrass that same friend, but I remember him getting stuck on one of the levels for like a long time. <laughs> or he got through it, but the way he did, I'll just mention, I'll just say, the board game level. You know what you did. <laughs> that still amuses me. Oh, uh, man. But yeah, no, we had some good times. The Xbox, um, the original Xbox was pretty cool. Like, it, it eventually won me over, you know? I was like, you know what? Microsoft actually kind of knows what they're doing here. And then I saw some of the games that were coming out on the 360. You know, you had Gears of War. And when I saw that first demo of Dead Rising in that shopping mall where there were gazillions of zombies on the screen and you're like taking this, like all these weapons from all the the stores and you had this weird like excavator thing. You were just like, <sighs> just chopping up all these zombies in there. I'm like, okay, I got to play this. This looks really cool. So, you know, I followed and got the Xbox 360. Um, not right away at launch, um, I never, I never got any of the Xbox systems right at launch. Um, the original Xbox, I didn't get until several months in, uh, same with the 360. Uh, I didn't get it until I played gears at a friend's house. I was like, okay, this is pretty sweet. Um, the Xbox one, I didn't get at launch because I thought they kind of botched their unveiling. Remember that was when they did all the TV, TV game, TV, TV thing. And they were really pushing the connect really hard. And it's just, eh, the person who was running Xbox at the time was just not, they kind of forgot who their core gamers were who built up that Xbox brand. And they were, I know they were trying to expand, you know, everyone was looking at the Wii and looking at what it did. <clears throat> and so everyone was trying to, you know, get a piece of that pie, you know, it's like, oh, you got adults and grandmas and, you know, people who've never played games before, we want to get some of those people, but I think they strayed 
too far away. But now, um, with the new, you know, head of Xbox, um, Phil Spencer, I think he's doing an excellent job, and I think they've really gotten things back on track again. Oh, God, and then I remember, you know, we're living in the apartment, and the original Xbox, that was right around the time where IGN and GameSpot, they started streaming the press events, and the whole thing you had, what was it, Peter Moore used to be there, and he would get tattoos on his arm of the release date for, I think he he did it for Halo 2. He did it for one other one. I forget. He did it like at least twice. I think they showed him one time he was getting a tattoo at the beginning of the event. And then at the end, he came on and showed what the tattoo was or something. Um, but yeah, I remember like the big one was the Halo 2. He like, okay, the tattoo. And then he would like lift his shirt up on his on his arm and you'd see the release date that was kind of unique um yeah i mean there's just I'm, I'm sure i'll think of tons more memories as we go you know as i stop recording this but like yeah no i mean xbox uh no they they took a lot of skeptical people and they kind of made believers out of them i mean they had to have, considering, I mean, I mentioned the Red Ring thing earlier. Think about how how much people ended up loving the Xbox, because you went from people making fun of the original, thinking it was going to be a flop, to, I don't know if I know a single person who didn't own an Xbox 360, who didn't have at least one red ring i had at least two i might have had three i can't even remember at this point um i know i had it at least twice because one time i was almost at the end of end of ninja gaiden 2 i remember my friends were coming over because we would all get together and we would all play ninja gaiden 2 that game was really hard um and right toward the final boss, there was like some lava, there was some like fire boss and the machine just crapped itself. And so we had to wait for that to, until we could play it again. And then it crashed at least one other time. I, oh, Bioshock. That pissed me off. Cause I was most of the way, actually, I think I had gotten to the, I literally got to the final boss on Bioshock and every time I would, it would do the cutscene, and then I would go into the room and it would just freeze. And then I would get a red ring. Yes, it was Bioshock. Thankfully I got all the way to the end, but I was like, really, really guys. But you know, like I said, everybody, I don't, I don't know a single person who, who had a 360 who didn't have their machine at least take a dump on them at least once. Everybody I knew had at least one red ring of death incident. Um, so, but for them to still, people would, you know, even though they, everybody had that problem, they still went back and bought new ones or they went and got them repaired. Um, you know, Microsoft lost probably like millions of dollars because they offer, they finally had to, break down and offer um, repair, you know, free repairs uh, because it was such a mass problem that everybody had. Um, but people still liked them. So, I mean, the 360 was huge. And then I had, you know, Xbox One really wasn't quite as significant, I don't think, overall as far as, like, games and stuff. I mean, it was cool, but I, I just remember a lot more of Xbox during the 360 days. However, the major thing that I really loved about the Xbox One era was that is when we started thinking accessibility. And I think it was 2015, they gave us Narrator. Our dashboard could finally speak to us and it worked really well i did a video of it on the channel a couple years later we have the xbox adaptive controller we have additional accessibility features 
and we've had games that have started you know i don't think we've had one that's really been 100 percent you know accessible especially to blind low vision or for blind players but we're getting there step by step but we have a an accessible con console dashboard we have uh more control methods uh, we have the adaptive controller, the Logitech um, accessories for it. Uh, all that is awesome. And now the Xbox Series consoles also out of the box. Because remember, the Xbox One did not have accessibility built in. That, that was a patch that came in. That was a system update that came like halfway through that system's lifespan. Um. But now, you know, the PS5 and the Xbox Series consoles, they have screen readers built in. Nintendo's just sleeping in la-la land way back there and just not... They gave us a Zoom, but the, there's no text-to-speech at all in theirs. So I'm hoping to God that, if nothing else, they'll be shamed into putting it in, in the next real uh, new system that they make. But again, I'm not going to hold my breath. <clears throat> um... You know, oh, you know, just looking at the, the dashboards over time. Remember the blades. I miss the blades. I don't miss the ads that were on them. But I remember um, I liked the blades. That You had this cool little, those little silver tabs on the sides. And you, you'd switch between the different blades, different types of content. And then you could have different wallpapers, uh, you know, because we had Halo, we, we also got Machinima. We also got things like red versus blue. I remember I had a red versus blue wallpaper on my Xbox, original Xbox that had the blade or no, that was the 360 that had the blades. Cause the, the original had that, um, it had that original, um, you know what? I'm going to do a search for that. I want to play that because it's short. Um, let's see. Original Xbox boot. Yeah. God, remember this? Let's see that again. Oh, classic. And you know, I remember the 360 one, but I think the original Hello and welcome to the illegally cited YouTube. I think the original Xbox uh boot up sequence was so memorable. I remember we had a neighbor upstairs or downstairs and we knew that he had an Xbox because every once in a while you would, I would hear that telltale sign, that sound effect that, uh, that was firing up. Um, oh, it was just so memorable. Really kind of cool too. Had this green light glow and then it morphed into the, I like that original, the original kind of sharp, uh, sharp angular green Xbox logo. Um, yeah, I mean, you had the blades and then you had the avatars. That was a thing for a while. And they had those like, like tile things. You'd give them all kinds of accessories and stuff. Like I said, you had Xbox live. You had one versus 100. You had... Like this, I remember game room where you could build your own virtual arcade. They had like dozens of different old arcade games. I think a lot of them were made by Hamster is the company that made them. And Giant Bomb would do a quick looks of all of those. Like I said red versus blue. And then, you know, recently, one of the best values in gaming, bar none... Xbox Game Pass. Um, here you have games coming out day one. You can buy them in the store, or you or you sign up for Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate, and you can play them 
at no additional cost. I have not purchased Forza Horizon 5, but I've put several hours into it because I downloaded it for my PC on Game Pass. It's a great way to test a game if you don't know if it's going to be accessible to you. Save you some money that way. It's a great way to discover uh, new games, uh, especially little indie games. There's a lot of great stuff on there. You know, like I said, a lot of these first-party games, Microsoft titles now, are going to be day one Game Pass. Um, yeah, man. Um, I mean, there's a lot to like. Uh, Xbox. So those are some of the memories that I have. And like I said, I'm sure I'll think of a dozen more later. I'm like, oh, I should have talked about that. Uh, but those are some of the memories that I have. So they had their, I do want to wrap up by talking about their 20th anniversary event that, that Microsoft had earlier today. Uh, it was during my lunch break. So I checked it out. It was about a little about a half hour or so. And, um, I thought that was actually pretty decent. Um, I got a couple good chuckles out of it. They showed some old clips from way back in the day where Bill Gates and The Rock were talking about the original Xbox. That was cheesy as hell, but really kind of funny as you look back at it. You know, you have The Rock that was like spouting out all these like technical terms and it was it was really just kind of funny. Um, and you know it was old because it was still WWF. Bill Gates was talking and he's like, yeah, Rock from the WWF. I'm like, oh, I remember those good old days before. I don't like WWE. WWF just sounds cooler. Um, and then they showed, then they cut to later, they had Rock, The Rock come back and talk about, you know, like, man, I can't believe it's 20 years. And then he announced this um Xbox Vault, which I need to actually take a look at. So there, you go to this Xbox, I think it's xboxvault.com, and uh, you look through the site, and I guess you can somehow, if you you can win prizes or stuff, and I got to look into that a little bit. So they did that. Um, they announced a documentary series coming in mid-December actually a six-part documentary series coming to various streaming platforms and I believe it's called Power On and they showed a little teaser of it and I'm genuinely interested in this it's kind of how they came up with the original Xbox and you know they talked a lot about even in the teaser there what I was talking about earlier. I mean, people were like, are you insane? Yeah. You got people that are going to make office. You're going to make them ha have them make a game console. Are you stupid? Um, but yeah, I think it looks like it's going to be a really good documentary. I guess they've been working on it for like three years now. So I will definitely be watching this when it comes out later in, I don't, I think it's December 13th ish it's after halo comes out um i think but uh yeah i'm definitely going to check that out and while we're talking about videos uh in 2022 um on paramount plus there's going to be a halo series of some sort which could be good they did a little halo speaking of halo they did they did like a little halo orchestral orchestral uh, live session thing. Um, that was actually not bad. And that made sense for what it was, you know, 20th anniversary. Halo was really what put that system on the map. I still fondly remember the kind of choir choral chant at the beginning and then cutting it, cutting into those cool cellos and guitars for the theme song, such a memorable... There was a lot of songs in that first game that I really, really liked. Um, they did that. And then they announced, what is it, 76 more backwards compatible Xbox and Xbox 360 games are out now. And you can put your old games in if you own the discs. You can buy them on the on the stores if you want to purchase them and have them digitally. 
but there are 76 more titles and some of them have been some existing titles have been updated to have better like frame rates and performance and things and so they you know again honoring the legacy of uh you know i mean with that one announcement think about this with that one announcement that they didn't even hardly spend any time on they completely upsold Nintendo and just, I mean, they just laughed in Nintendo's face. They're like, oh yeah, Nintendo, we're Nintendo and we're going to trickle out a couple of games maybe whenever and we're going to charge you 50 to 80 bucks a year for the privilege. And Xbox is like, no, nah, no, nah, here you go. Um, yeah, you can buy them, but uh, at least they're letting you buy what you want. They're actually not just putting sloppy ports out there. They're making sure that they actually run and play well. And in a lot of cases are even up resed and run at better frame rates because we have extra horsepower. So, I mean, like I said, Phil Spencer, he gets it, you know, their, their team, uh, there's so much potential Nintendo has with their in ginormous back catalog, but they just don't, care and they do the bare minimum effort they think they can get away with and i really like what xbox is doing what they've really become in that area so uh they did that um what else did they show they showed a couple other montages and things they showed no real game announcements or anything like that um but they did end with and i have to download it yet the halo infinite free because the, the multiplayer is free to play the multiplayer beta is out now and you can download it on uh, xbox or pc via game pass for free or just in general for free and all of your progress is going to carry over to the game when it launches in december the campaign is also coming in december which i'm very much looking forward to but uh, yeah, people are uh, being able to play Season 1 of the uh, Halo multiplayer, Halo Infinite multiplayer, today. So that's cool. Um, yeah, and that's... I mean, I, I did watch the audio-described version. I know a lot of people had issues with the kind of really lackluster audio description that they did for... I think it was their E3 event? or I forget, no, maybe it was something after that. But they had kind of a bad um, showcase last time as far as audio description. But they actually had human narration this time, and they generally did a pretty good job. I mean, while I was watching it, they missed a few things, but honestly, there were so many like highlights and sizzle reels that the, it would have been impossible to keep up showing or describing every little scene or every little gameplay cut. Because you would see two seconds of one game, second of another game, two seconds of another game. And it was just bam, bam, bam. So, I mean, they did what they could, and it was better. I, You know, I think they did a much better job this time. So, anyway, I have babbled on for far too long. Um, but I had, I had to do a little bit of Xbox reminiscing. You know, wanted to talk about the blind, um, blind low vision perspective stuff. Uh, talk about the new rig, talk about a couple other odds and ends. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it helpful. And thank you to everybody who's been following the channel for a, for so long. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Like it if you did. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited illegallycited.com which yes got it it has been updated <laughs> and right here on youtube so until next time chat with you guys again later